Connor Bright wrote into us. Said, hey, CDC, IGN did a report on Barry and Lily Mo recently, which was kind of cool. I don't know if you guys saw that. Your boy. Talking about how Sony, hand- they didn't mention me at all, of course. Talking about how Sony handled the announcement of the PSP, PS3, and most importantly, the Vita storefronts, specifically in how it was communicated to developers who had active projects in the works for the Vita. Despite a well-written article and a pretty clear-cut case of Sony dropping the ball, most comments I saw were people claiming that this was to be expected because the Vita was dead and developers making games for it or wasting their time. Fanboys will be fanboys, but Sony has handled this announcement so poorly that I'm just shocked by how people can justify and defend it. Does the PlayStation community need to do better, uh, a better job of calling out Sony on their failings to avoid these anti-consumer moves? Love well, everything Last Stand Media is becoming, but I swear you better make sure that chickens remain thoroughly fucked. You guys are getting real vulgar. Wow. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's wild. No, it's no big deal, but... Um, I just made a huge mouth noise. I was like, so, uh, you're welcome, Ben. (laughs) Yeah. Ben's having a nervous breakdown right now, (laughs) but I'm the same way. I have the misophonia thing too, but I wanted to call this out because I saw those comments too. And those comments annoy the shit out of me, not only because I'm a Vita developer, I was a Vita developer, but because like, why are you defending mega corporations? This is, this reminds me a lot of like, um, this frankly reminds me a lot of like what's going on with Amazon where everyone's like Amazon uh, supports new taxes and Amazon supports the $15 minimum wage. And I'm like, yeah, of course they do. They want to put everyone else out of business. That's why they're supporting. There's always a, there's always an ulterior motive, right? To, the, to what big corporations do. They don't need your defense. It's usually sinister. Yeah. At the, at the other end. And um, I feel like it's not wrong for them to have shut the store down. It was wrong for them to sell us a dev kit in March. And I already explained last week why it was such a big deal. A second dev kit. We already had one, but why it was such a big deal because we were building it on older engines. And so people that are not, they're not understanding. Like the reason we wanted to do it on Vita was because we love the platform, but also because we actually made quite a bit of money there. I mean, people still buy their games on Vita. Um, Mm -hmm. So I was curious, Chris, what do you think about this? Like this, this idea of like people kind of celebrating it was kind of hard for me to read. Like where everyone's like, well, you're a fucking idiot if you, you know, not talking to me, but just in the comments, like what kind of idiot would support Vita now anyway? It's like you're almost kind of disconnected from reality a little bit. Like people are still releasing Dreamcast games. Vita sold five million more units um, and we were doing pretty well there. So I'm mad at the way Sony handled it. They totally screwed us. They screwed a lot of developers. Games are still getting canceled for Vita every day. One just got canceled today, actually, from Kickstarter. But um. What do you think of this defense force coming out for Sony? I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it. the Sony defense force. I'm not a fan. Yeah. Like, I, I don't like it. I, I think, um, look, it's it's one thing to be like, hey, you know, this storefront, this platform is going to be dead, uh, or we're going to shut this platform down in a year's time. It, it's it's the notice, the short notice that is the problem here. You know, like I don't think anybody expected the Vita to to be around in like 2029. You know, it's just a matter of the way that they handled it. And, and there's no excuse for the way that they handled it. Like, just plain and simple, like objectively speaking, it's it is wrong to have people think that they're going to be making games for this platform that is presumably going to be around for at least another year, only to shut it down mere months. Not even like not even like a couple months. Re- this, this is like a very sh- like two, th- three months max. Yeah, because we need to submit by June. Yeah. And the games need to be published by July. So it's not even like the August deadline is totally accurate. Yeah, it, it, this. No, th- it's just unacceptable. Like, this is just an objectively bad way to handle it. No matter what company, no matter what individual is, is handling it this way, this is the exact wrong way to do it. And anybody defending it is is a- out of their mind, to be quite honest. Dustin, where do you, where are you on the defense force? Because I I just feel like we want Sony to be better. Yeah. Part of that is making sure they're communicating well with developers. If if Sony's selling developers like us dev kits for dead consoles, and dead he- pieces of hardware, that's that's fucked up. That yeah, we are lucky that we don't we're not living hand to mouth. We make quite a, a nice amount of money on our games, and we're able to develop the next game, and it's not like a huge deal. But this could really sink a developer who is like, we put all of this time mm-hmm. and effort into this port, which we cannot release. I think that I I've thought about this. It's funny that this is related, but I mean, I think that just that people are what I'm realizing are just tribalistic by nature. Yes. Maybe yes. it's just a mm-hmm evolutionary thing that we're still you know like monkeys beating our chests and 
wanting to fight the other group just just because we have a different you know video game console so i don't really i maybe we can put a nice spin on it that people are looking for a community to be a part of and i mean that happens with our community is that people want to say that our our content is way better than everyone else's we appreciate that and and sometimes i think you can be taken too far where it's like they need to shit on other people because ours is so good i mean and this relates to to everything yeah um and it's weird because maybe this is a little bit too far removed but there's a guy i know in my town who is part of a community on youtube that reviews elevators and that's awesome it's it's interesting because i've done some snooping around into this and there is drama amongst the elevator youtube community quite often and so like i said this happens everywhere it's just it's an unavoidable thing i think the best thing we can do again i'm beating the same drum again is just to behave the way that we find is best and hope that our our way of carrying ourselves is transferred to other people I, I think the confusing thing about it, though, is is like the things that I am a massive fan of, I specifically have spent a lot of time criticizing, you know, specifically because I'm a big fan of them and I want them to, to improve and be better. So I just don't understand, like, what the motive is. If you are a big fan of Sony, like, what reason, like, what is your end game? to defend this a, a, a decision like this like i just i just don't understand how it makes sony better i don't understand how it helps you it's just confusing to me as somebody who is a fan of certain things and who criticizes them regularly it's just i, I don't know if i understand <laughs> the mindset yeah, I, I i i i understand partisanship but you have to constantly um disabuse yourself of that you mm -hmm. know like check yourself make yeah. sure you're trying to be no one's objective i think fully but you, you can no. be as objective as you can be and i certainly think this show is as objective as it gets for playstation um if anyone gets people when i see people getting mad at us for being too hard on playstation i'm like good 